an eargasm of learning, and a no-fuss show. Welcome to the Creative Talk Podcast, where you can learn straightforward topics about branding, digital entrepreneurship, online business, and many more with your charming host, John Santos, along with inspiring entrepreneurs, creators, and thought leaders worldwide. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Creative Talk. And we have another special guest for this episode. Very humble. Let me just say this, guys. Very humble, very beautiful, very intelligent. I'm a fan already. <laughs> a podcaster, a podcaster. She's also a life purpose coach. She helps solopreneurs out there to gain clarity on their personal branding. So, guys, she is a power pack person branding expert, podcaster. Wow. You can see that I'm, you know, I'm really a fan of this person. <laughs> and she has a very, you know, kind and genuine heart. We've been talking off cam and I'm just amazed with this person. Okay. We will welcome our very special guest for today. And again, like our previous episodes, the challenge for me to pronounce her name. <laughs> All right, let's all welcome Miss Catherine Paquette. Welcome to the Creative Talk Podcast. Hello, hello. Thank you for those really beautiful and heartwarming words. Honestly, I couldn't have gotten a nicer intro than <laughs> this one. And you pronounced my name perfectly. So you, yeah. you're on it. You're on it. We're already starting really high and we're ready for this. <laughs> Again, um, Catherine, you know, we, we talk off cam. I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, time difference busy schedule you're running your business you know there's a lot of things going on but thank you because you are here with us today in this episode yes thank you for having me i'm excited i love this idea of just having a genuine and low-key conversation because that's where we get to create this connection and for your listeners to get the most out of our convo so i definitely love your concept yay all right so Catherine. Um, before we, this is kind of tradition here in the show, before we talk about, you know, your, your position, your title, you know, what, what you do, we are more focused on what influenced you or who influenced you to be in this, you know, in this position you are right now to be in this, in my perspective, you are in a position of, of authority. You have this expertise, now that's the output, right? That's the, that's now. We are, you know, we are excited to know the story, your story, how you came to be in this position you are right now. The floor is yours. Feel free to tell us your story. Yeah, thank you so much. That's a beautiful question. So it's it's a mix of a lot of things, but the first thing that influenced me to become who I am today definitely has to be my grandma. So very young, she was the first one. I will always remember, she would tell all of our cousins, you should all be doctors because one day I'm going to be sick. I'm going to need your help. But me, she would come to me and she was like, Catherine, you have a gift. You have a gift with communication. You should be either on TV, on the radio. Like she had me dream. Like for me, I was like, is that even something I can do? And she was like, no, no, no. Your, your communication is so, so beautiful. You need to be in the eye of the public. So that was the first, that was the first seed but that was a seed that was planted. I must have been like, what, seven years old? Like she started very young to put it in my head. Um, and it's only after a lot of years, like people recognizing that in me. So that helped a lot. So people around you that tell you like, wow, you have such, you have such a gift and I feel like you're my coach. So that's like the first things that people started to, to tell me. Um, I also had a huge influence from working in a startup, a startup in Montreal that was run by female entrepreneurs. So can you imagine she's young? She was 32. She's running her business. I'm like, I can do that too. And seeing people like Tony Robbins, Marie Forleo, those are all names that 
come together just showed me what's possible. Because for me, I was like, I see myself helping people, coaching people and helping them stand out online with their brands. But is it even something I can be paid for? And then you look at people like Marie Forleo, Tony Robbins, um, Gary V. These people have had an idea, worked hard for years and came to something. So I would say that all of that together brings me today to who I am and knowing that I'm never, I'm never going to give up on this journey of entrepreneurship. Honestly, I've been an employee. I've been in the corporate world. I had a taste of it and do not want to go back there. (laughs) But again, you know, I always say this also, um, it's not bad. It's not something bad, you know, in working, starting, as an employee, I've been in that position before, you know, uh, a nine to five job, what we can say a traditional setting. It's not bad. And I, I actually, I believe that in order for you to be a good businessman, in order for you to be, a, you know, a successful entrepreneur, those season when you are at that position, that is the key. You know why? Because you understand the people in that level. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, the system, you are in the system and, and you are, you know, you are capable of understanding what solution you can share, what value you can share because you were there. I couldn't agree more. I would honestly never change my journey. Like now I know that I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to stay an entrepreneur. But as you said, I've learned so much being in the groundwork, being in a business, seeing an entrepreneur doing her thing. um, I don't think I would have been here and doing what I do if it wasn't for that specific part. So I often have people asking me like, should I be an entrepreneur? But the thing is we have to listen to our intuition because maybe as you said, you're gonna choose one job, that job is gonna teach you so much and you might have another one. And then, then you'll start your, your business, maybe part-time, maybe full-time. There there are so many different journeys. And that's why I love podcasts like these, because people get to listen to our journeys and get to like, see what they like about maybe your journey, my journey, someone else's journey, and then they create their own little magic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love that you said that, you know, each of us have different journeys and I want to, I want to dig in that. Um, about, you know, personal branding and um, corporate branding, you know, personal and business, because I'm sure, again, this is my opinion, there's a lot that are confused, which one is which. Plus, we, for the sake of our viewers and listeners, not everyone is aware of it, right? That's why we need people like you who are experts in the field that can explain thoroughly what are the differences between, you know, a personal brand and a corporate brand, because we have our own different journeys. Some of us will end up, you know, establishing a a, a personal brand. And on the flip side, others may go the route of, you know, corporate brand. The worst thing though, is you think corporate brand is good for you, but you end up establishing a personal brand. So there's a mix up. So please, um, again, the floor is yours. Please explain what is the difference between the two. It's such a good question. I feel like it's a question that I get very, very often. Um, And look, there are different opinions on this. And I will share with you my view and my way of working. So my way of working is to know that our niche, this keyword this word that i've been here so much what's my niche what should i do your niche is you at the end of the day so for me your human being your human being is your brand and your brand is your business so they are all the same so your personal brand and your business or corporate brand is exactly the same so let me just develop a little bit more for people that might be confused so let's say you're an employee You have a personal brand, whether you're working for an employer, you should still be branding yourself online. You should be a parent. You should be showing your work. So that's your personal brand. Um, If you're an entrepreneur, you're 
doing your thing, you still have your personal brand. If you're a big corporation, at the end of the day, these corporations create brands to create like this personal side, to create connections with users. But the founder is never going to change at the end of the day. I find and reading a lot about brands and about big companies, often a brand is going to lose their momentum when they lose the essence and the purpose of the founder. So that's where I feel like personal branding and corporate branding is one and the same. It's the same, same thing. And it's the same process. Like if I would share how to build a brand, it's the same process for personal or corporate. Same thing. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I love that. I I love that. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure our listeners and our viewers, there's, there's a lot now who are panicking and what that's a different perspective. But again, you know, I love, I do understand your context of, of, of where you're, you're coming from. You mentioned, um, you mentioned building a brand. Um, I, I want to dig into that. All right. Since you mentioned it already, and I love the, the, the momentum of this, um, information that you are sharing. Can you share with us um, how to build a solid brand? You know, not just the brand. And and I don't believe in, you know, being the best because that's never going to happen. It's like perfectionism. Yeah. But yeah. I do believe in building something solid. Right. So how do you build, how do you build a solid brand? Yeah. Um, that's one of my favorite questions, just because I have such a specific approach to branding um, and I blend. So you spoke about purpose and life coaching. So I blend this part of my life because I've been a coach and now I'm really specifically building a branding studio with my sister. But that part is in me because one of the keys to building a very strong and powerful brand is strong is starting with a strong foundation. So the way I see it is if you want, I love this analogy just because it's so easy to, to remember if you take a tree, for example, your tree is never going to blossom and be strong and grow. If it's roots under the earth is are not strong, if they're not developed and that the part of the roots is for me, your clay. Clarity. So knowing who are you, why do, why do you do what you do? Why did you start your business in the first place? Do you have a greater vision? What are your values? What, what's driving your business? That is for me under the earth. So that's your foundation. So that's the first step. You have to be clear on what you're offering, why you're offering it, who are you offering it to, who is it for? Um, and you have to know yourself so deeply. What do you love? Like, I love talking to my clients and literally telling them, can you show me your closet? Wow. Honestly. <laughs> see your closet. I want to see your clothes. I want to see like who you are in your room when no one is looking like that is the person deep down, you know, like sometimes we don't want to put a certain piece of clothing because it's too out there. It's too extra, but that's the person that you really want to be. So knowing who you are is the first step. So clarity. And then I always say that the next step is creating consistent content because people need to know what's mm. your expertise. What do you talk about? What are you good at? What's your industry? So being consistent. And um, lastly, I would say like creating a community, creating relationships. And these three things together, I feel are, are like the key to, to success, to building a strong personal and corporate uh, brand. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. I, I, I agree with that. You know, um, consistency, the last two points are very strong individually, but you know, combined, wow, they can make or break the brand, right? Consistency and building, you know, connection, community. Um, okay. I'm going to throw in a question there. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's talk about consistency. Yeah. Um, this is in the context of creating content and, you know, sharing it out to the world, right? Exactly. Okay. So um, what are your tips? What are your tips for everyone, including me, yeah. <laughs> our viewers, our <laughs> listeners, and me, you know, you're the star. What are your tips 
in the context of being consistent as a brand, you know, sharing mm -hmm. content. There's a lot of, b before you answer that, there's a lot of, um, I think I had a, a lot of messages this week that is similar and connected to consistency. And I remember making a long post to one of my friend in, in Instagram. He's, he has a huge following, he's very successful about this topic, consistency. Does the, the question is, do you need to share content every day in, in any platform or in, in any form, maybe video, illustration, or, or, a, or a blog post, but do you need to do it daily? And do you need to do it like massively? Because that's where the concept of being consistent is. And then on the other hand, you have also people that say, okay, I can do once a week or twice or thrice a week because I'm consistently doing so, right? So there's two perspectives and I do mm -hmm. understand both contexts. What is your take on this? Yeah, I love that. Um, personally, I believe in one mastering something. So what I mean by that is, can you choose one or two social media platforms that you are ready to master to the T. You're going to be so good at it that people are just going to come to you naturally. So I would never say to be everywhere, every time. That would just bring you to burnout. And we don't want that. And yes, especially stress. in this context. <laughs> so we do not want this for our people listening. So first of all, master one to two platforms. And secondly, for me, consistency and the key of building a community. I've done so by posting three times a week and that was it. But my listeners knew I am going to be on my platform on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So you just have to help people. You have to help your audience know when is when is Catherine going to be online? Like, when can I expect some content from her? So that's the first step. And depending on what platform you're choosing, for sure, I would say that stories, just because I've done, I've done a challenge. I've done a challenge for myself. I remember doing this and this is what made me uh, be able from being from a stagnant number of followers to actually jumping and going over a thousand was I give myself a challenge. 30 days, I'm going to show my face every day on stories. So it could be a boomerang. It could be a picture, but people need to connect with the human being behind your brand, right? And you guys can imagine the ripple effect that made on my business. So if people listening out here, I would literally invite everyone listening to do that challenge. So let's do it 30 days, show your face every day on stories. Game. It's easy, like one I'm, second, show it. I'm, 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 I'm with you with this challenge, game. Actually, I already do started it. doing so. Good. <laughs> I love it. And this honestly, morning, yeah. I love it. It's it's a game changer. I can't I can't explain how much people just want to know that you're there. They want to know that like you have coffee in the morning. They want to know that you work out maybe or you go take a walk like they need to connect with a human being behind. And that's the key of building strong brands and consistently showing yourself. Um, I would say like that, that's my take on, on consistent content. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and let me support that. Let me support that. Um, because you, you said, you know, uh, you show, you show yourself and that makes that connection with people that gross relationship and that builds the community. And, and for me, that is strong. That is really effective because by doing so, you establish authenticity. And that often being, you know, being authentic in this generation, in this world is a big thing. People need to know that they can trust you. They can put their, they have this security with you. Uh, with your, it, it will start with your brand. And then like what you've said, you take them in your daily life. You, you, you know, give them a glimpse of how you run your life, how you run your show. Um, it, it just opens up a lot of doors for them to know you more. And 
by doing so, it established that credibility that you are not, not that you're not, you know, you're pretending, but it's, it gives them the security that I know, I know Catherine, I know John, I know the Creative Talk podcast. And when that happens, you create a bond within your, your audience, your target market. And when that happens, that bond is solidified then the trust will just get higher and higher. And whatever your output that you require, maybe sales, maybe followers, maybe you know, promotion or anything, they would easily get that and support you because you establish this strong bond between the two. And that will not happen if you don't bring them in your life, in your ways, in your steps, in your routine, for them to know that you are who you say you are. Oh, I couldn't have said it any better. And honestly, you went with the levels that I wanted to add trust. And it's exactly that. It's you start with authenticity, you build your credibility, and then you build trust. And then you have loyal followers, customers for life. So definitely, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more with your, uh, with your words. Yeah. Those are the, those are the, uh, you mentioned the, the key word that I was thinking loyal followers i love that catherine you can have a lot of followers and they you know people come and go one thing you're you're massively uh having this influx of followers and then the next day they're all gone but i love what you said loyal followers that change the game if you have loyal followers they will stick with you up and down they will support you and they will go with you through your journey towards success either they benefit from you also or they just you know they are just in you towards success because they believe in you and like what you've said they are loyal and they trusted you 100 percent. wow yeah that's the key. Honestly, numbers are just vanity. Honestly, for me, it's really just that. What we care about is engaging with people, is really creating those relationships and that loyalty. So yeah, I love, love that. Yeah. Wow, Catherine, let's not, you know, let's not talk about that. That's, ah, I just love your point of view. That's going to be a, a whole new different topic, you know, <laughs> vanity metrics. But, but, but yeah, um, just for the sake of our viewers and listeners, guys, don't get upset. I know this is a bit off the topic, but since you mentioned it, guys, yeah. don't be upset if you are, if you have, you know, in your perspective, a small following, right? Um, I read this in an article. Let's say if you have 500 followers only compared to, you know, you're, you're seeing hundreds, 10,000 or something. Imagine 500 would not fit inside a room. That's big. That's a lot of numbers, right? So be grateful that you have those. There is nothing wrong in dreaming to go big. I'm not a hypocrite. I dream of having a huge following, but I rather have a small and loyal followers, like what you mentioned, compared to a hundred or, you know, let's say being audacious, a million followers, but it's not genuinely attached with me, not giving me engagement, not supporting me. It's just for vanity. It's useless. There's no point in it. Exactly. Well added. Just to make sure that people are understanding that. And it really does come down to, um, to your brand because it, it is part of who you are, building that community and supporting who you are as a person. And numbers are just, are just numbers at the end of the day. Yeah. Right, right. So, Catherine, um, I'm... You know, I, I learn a lot from from those fast throw of information and I'm so excited. I'm so pumped up. Can you give us like basic tips, takeaway for our viewers, for our listeners about, you know, establishing and running and maintaining a brand? Mm -hmm. I love that. So first of all, just that maintenance is going to be so, so easy if you start in a strong way. So that's why people come to me because if you wait 
down the road when you're already grown your business and then you come to me and you're like, okay, I want to do a rebrand, but you haven't figured out the foundation, the purpose, the why, the values, then everything that's over is going to trickle down. You're not going to be able to flourish. You're not going to be able to grow. Um, So I really invite people very early in their journey to do a simple exercise. And that's the first thing I do with my clients is go on Pinterest and look for anything that inspires you. So this is to start creating your brand board. So I want people to start thinking of themselves, even if the person listening is someone working for someone else, a solopreneur that just is a freelancer or a digital nomad, whoever you are, um, to be really clear on who you are and Pinterest can really help you. So you pin anything that inspires you, vacation, cocktails, um, colors, you can pin fonts, you pin anything that inspires you as a human being, as a business owner. And remember that those are two, one in the same. Um, and through that, what I used to do with my, with my clients is create a brand board. So we want to bring out of that, what are colors that represent your brand? What are visuals that represent your brand? What are fonts that you're going to be using? Like four fonts, three to four fonts. Um, what are elements that are going to be represented? presented through your brand. So these things, these things, we put them on a brand board. Why? Because it would be way too difficult to run a business and being like all over the place. So to keep that consistency and running your brand and your business flawlessly is to go back to that board. So am I in my color palettes? Am I using the fonts that I've I've already chosen that represent me, that like tell a story. What am I selling? What are, What's my vision? What are my values? So if you are in your beginning stages and you get to do this homework before anyone else, that for me is a huge game changer because when you're going to be at that point that you're creating content for yourself, you're going to go see your brand board and you're going to be like, am I on brand? Am I consistent with who I am? Because a way to create trust and a way to to have that credibility, to make sure that you are building that strong business is people are going to recognize you. They know that when they see like multicolored tropical things, they know that Catherine is behind, like they know I'm there. It's, it's specific to who I am. So that's an exercise that I feel is the core to everything you do, because it's very visual, right? Social media is very, very visual. So you want to make sure that that consistency is there because you want to help your audience. You want to help them recognize you. You want to help them know what, what is, what, what is John going to speak about? Like what are five types of content that you are always choosing? So those are pillars that I feel is, is a great way to create a strong foundation and keeping that, that brand consistent to building that business. And it's all about that consistency, right? It's all about that resilience, never stopping. Um, so I would say that that for me would be, if, if I was in my beginning stages, I wished someone would have told me that if I wasn't aware of that. So definitely that would be the key, I would say. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I love that. Thank you for sharing those amazing learnings, Catherine. Thank you so much. I learn a lot myself. I mean, wow. It's just wow. I love your approach to the to the topic, you know, the your perspective and how you explain it. It's just smooth, direct, and straight to the point. Thank you for sharing those amazing learnings, Catherine. Thank you so much. Happy to do so. It's a topic that I'm passionate about, so I could speak on that subject for hours and hours. <laughs> I, yes, I can feel that, and 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 I, I share that passion also. And, and you can see that you know we're having this great momentum. But but yes. we have a program flow, and we reach the point of the show that we will play a game, Catherine. Ooh, we like that. Okay, <laughs> I'm listening. Right. So this is a tradition here in the Creative Talk podcast where we play a game, okay? So the goal of the game is to show our viewers, our listeners, that yes, we are experts in our field, 
but we are also human beings. Sometimes we don't know what to say. We laugh. We, you know, we, we be silly. And this is the part where we become human, so to speak. <laughs> I love that. I All am right. so ready for your questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we call this game the creative fast talk. You are not allowed to spend, you know, more time in thinking what the right answer would be. First thing, the first word that comes into your mind, shoot. Okay. I will be asking you random questions. They are so random that, you know, it's just, I don't have, uh, I, I didn't build the questions. It's, it was just given to me by the team, but I do have the authority to choose which one. And then other questions will lead to, they have the supporting questions. All right. Amazing concept. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank my team. They're so wonderful. Uh, Without them, I'm nothing. <laughs> oh, I love that. Love it. All right. Ready, Catherine? Ready. Let's start with something simple. First question, sun or snow? Sun. Easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> All right, next. Structured or chaotic? Mm, structured. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. I yeah. feel that. You guys are, yeah. yeah. Next. Love or money? Love. Yeah, Very love good. always wins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. What are you afraid of? Oof, I'm afraid of like basically insects. So anything <laughs> insects I'm afraid of, but I'm also afraid on more of a symbolic way of being trapped. So oh, yeah. trapped even like in every sense, I'm a little mm. bit like claustrophobic, but yes, also yes. being trapped and not being able to be creative, mm. not having my freedom. So that I would say biggest, biggest fear. Yeah. All right. With that said, do, do you recall or... Do you remember any situation back then that you were trapped in somewhat way? I've always tried, and it's, it's a really good question. I've always tried to understand where it comes from. Um, and I honestly don't have an answer to, to this <laughs> question. I feel like I can only think of being younger and having like cousins, like okay. guys, like stucking you under a cushion and <laughs> it would scare the crap out of me. So maybe <laughs> something like that. Right, but right. I have no idea where it comes from. Yeah, good question. Okay, next. <laughs> Your favorite color. Mm, blue okay passenger or driver passenger hate driving <laughs> <laughs> youtube or netflix netflix all right movies or books books yeah. all right since you answered books there's a supporting question what are the three top mm. books ever for you okay I would say Big Magic. I would say Think and Grow Rich. Mm. Um, and I would say Unleash the Giant Within. I think those three are like huge. I have two of those at the back. <laughs> at the back, there. I have like <laughs> all books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Next, mountains or the beaches? Beach. Yeah, so with that said, you need to plan in visiting the Philippines because you would oh, love the beaches here. I am sure I would love, love, love. It's a country that's definitely in my list. Definitely my list is like slowing down because of the situation. Of course, but... of course, of course. <laughs> but definitely, I would love to, love to. I'll let you know when. Sure, sure. I, I would love yeah, definitely to you would know, love be that. your tour guide. <laughs> Let's See what do I it. do? See what I do? The, the Philippines is not even paying me to promote the tourism <laughs> of my country, but that's how I love my country. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's so good. Definitely one day. Yeah. Yes, yes. Next, if you were an animal, what animal would you be and why? I think I'd be a fish just because I so I so represent with my zodiac sign, which is Pisces. Ah. And I'm very adaptable. I can get in any way. And like, yeah, I think I'd be a fish. Like that's the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next question. Soap or toothbrush? Toothbrush? <laughs> It's the first thing that came up. Didn't think about that one, but yeah, toothbrush. All right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next, your dream superpower and why? 
Ooh, I would love to read in people's mind. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, I would love that. Solid. Okay, last question. This is a signature question in the Creative Talk podcast. It might yeah. this might be silly or but mostly it it you know the answer of the guest is always something serious, all right? Okay. I want you to be totally honest and transparent with in answering this question because this I believe creates a bond between you, me, our viewers and our listeners out there, all right? Last question the traditional question, if you have the power to bring back someone back from the dead, who would it be and why? Anyone. Mm, anyone. I love that. Anyone, anyone. Um, I think it would be my grandpa. Yeah, mm. it'd be my grandpa, someone that has always been so grounding for our family. He's, he's a silent leader. So he didn't speak a lot. He was always just there and he would bring such a such a serenity, like knowing that he was there. He had so much wisdom. It's that type of people that have you understand just how much a strong leader doesn't have to be someone that's loud, someone that has to like that you're necessarily going to see come in a room. He was just his presence was noticed because his energy was strong, but in a way that he was still that silent leader and with so much wisdom and honestly if I could have just one moment more with him I would definitely I would choose him I would choose him over anyone yeah wow and I'm sure he's very proud seeing you in this position of authority and successful helping out people and I believe that Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. That's such a beautiful question because you're right. It could go anywhere from do I want to bring back someone that's like a celebrity or someone that I could learn from. But honestly, um, in these times, I feel like we're so we think about how life is, how quickly things can change. And I feel like that would be that would be the the closest to what I want today. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Catherine, for, you know, spending the time with us and playing and answering those silly questions. <laughs> it was Thank you so, much. so fun. It was so fun. Like literally, I really wanted to go with the game and not think twice. And I, some of my answers, I'm like, really? You want to be a fish? Like you could have <laughs> said like a snake or something like that because it's the same but, thing. But, but you know Catherine, what? let me just say this. You are the first ever guest that answered fish for that question. <laughs> sure we are on what 33rd oh no 32nd episode already i'm sure <laughs> and you, you like got lion li lion should have <laughs> like tiger i don't know but, 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 but yeah nice I'm, nice I'm colorful i'm sweet so i'm like <laughs> maybe the like yeah it works <laughs> right right <laughs> totally works. right so Catherine, um I know you have a lot of projects in line, online events or any releases, social media accounts. Feel free to promote it. The floor is yours. Thank you. So first of all, definitely anyone that wants tips on personal branding uh, can go check me out at Hey It's Cat P on Instagram. Um, I have a podcast that I'm absolutely passionate about called The Books Made Me Do It. So if you want to check out, you want to be inspired, uh, you want to learn guests that were impacted by books and coming very soon. So we created our Instagram page. It has not been populated yet. So so please be patient. But me and my sister are launching our branding studio called We Are Kumu. So literally W-E. R K U M U. And um, we are being specialized in knowing that we are entrepreneurs doing marketing for entrepreneurs. And we want to help solopreneurs, freelancers, digital nomads to build a personal brand. So we literally offer services from logo creation to doing communication for you, social media strategy. And we also do your uh, brand style board. So that are all things that we do. And I'm so excited for, for what's yet to come for, uh, for us. Yeah. Thank you for that moment. Wow. Thank you, guys. Do connect with Catherine. I'm sure she can help you in your journey towards success. So, guys, again, this is a wonderful 
learning pack episode with a wonderful guest. Always remember, you know, have a positive outlook in life. Smile. Thank you for being with us here on the Creative Talk Podcast. I'm your host, John Santos. Don't forget to listen and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. See you again, always.